deep down in our soul, we all have a special gift that can make a difference, that can touch people in a special way. Mr. Toastmaster, my fellow EG speaker, and most welcome guests, have you discovered your special gift? I did. My special gift was the hiccup that made all oh, the difference. I was a young college student at UC Davis. On the night before I turned 21, I was at the gas station. The time was 11.50, 10 minutes away from being officially legal for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I, went in, I went in line just to buy a small bottle of whiskey. My mama knew that I was going to have some alcohol on the night that I turned 21, so she <laughs> called in and, and checked in with me. Son, consume with moderation. <laughs> so I thought that a small bottle of whiskey was my level of moderation that she asked for. But Jimmy, my best college buddy, he <laughs> bought three big boxes of beer, and that was the definition of moderation. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a house party. He called up people, hey, it's 2021 birthday. And then they told him, dude, the time is 12.30 a.m. Hung up the phone. He tried to call people again. Hey, 2021 birthday party. We have pizza and fried chicken. And then they told him, no, the time is almost 1 o'clock. Who on earth would eat, would have some food at 1 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> and then I told Jimmy, hey, let me call him. I called him, hey, it's my 21 birthday. We have fried chicken and pizza. And don't hang up yet. We have whiskey and boxes of beer. And guess what? Three students from the master program came to our house. Two students from the PhD program came over. And especially one college professor also showed up too. We <laughs> <laughs> have a great party. And it was 5 o'clock in the morning. And they were still talking about the theory of BS. <laughs> it was 5 o'clock. And Jimmy and I have our class at 8 o'clock in the morning. We came to the class. I was sleepy and having a severe headache. Jimmy told me to, well, drink, drink water. So I, have my, so I have one gallon of water just for myself. <laughs> and then when we came to the class, it was my turn to give a presentation. And I did not know that I had to do one that day. <laughs> Professor called me up, and I was like, slowly made my way up to the stage. I felt like I was on the highway of hell. <laughs> so, I kept, so I told myself to, well, if you are on the highway of hell, then keep going, buddy. And I did. I went up to the stage. And then my mind was blank. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing just came in. I lost my train of thought and just completely blank. And I didn't know what to say. And then the hiccup came in. Then I remained silent for the next three minutes. And the only thing that people could hear was the hiccup. hiccup. <laughs> and all the ladies in my class thought that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> and I was shocked. They were giggling, and all the guys thought that was cute too. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Some time passed, and I knew that. I was going to fail my class, and my mother was going to kill me for it. I had to think quickly and come up with something to get that passing grade and move on with my education. And my friend Jimmy was not so nice. <laughs> he told me to finish one gallon of water for the hangover. And I was sure that on that particular day, on that particular day, I would be standing in a puddle of water of my own creation. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? That didn't happen. With all my energy, my strength, I opened my mouth, greeting professor, my fellow great communicators. And then I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> so for the next three minutes, nothing just came in. I'm waiting. I'm praying for some idea to rush through time and space, come to me, so that way it come out from my mouth and give me the passing grade. <laughs> but nothing came. And all day here with the hiccup, hiccup. And everybody went crazy about it. And 
I opened my mouth, I said, silence. What is it with silence that makes people uncomfortable? Why do people only feel good when we have to fill the air with noise? Then I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> <laughs> and then the hiccup came back. And then I end my speech right there. And then, half an hour later, my professor told me, Twin, well, you passed the class with the highest grade. <laughs> oh. I have an A for my speech. I was shocked. And I asked him, well, how did I do it, professor? He told me that, well, Twin, the hiccup made all the difference. <laughs> and I was so happy that the hiccup just came naturally. And then two years later, Jimmy, he asked me some advice on how to ask his longtime girlfriend to marry him. <coughs> and I was stuck with that question. I told him, well, Jimmy, try it when you have the hiccup. <laughs> and he did. He was like, will you marry me? <laughs> and then his girlfriend thought that was cute. And she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and on the, on the night before the wedding, Jimmy was hit by a drunk driver oh. and went into a coma for a few days. His wife to be cried days and night. Family on both sides cried. I was there too. I cried when I was not supposed to cry, but well. But then, after many hours of crying, everybody went hiccuping. <laughs> and then Jimmy opened his eyes and looked around and said, the hiccup. The difference. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me how you improved yourself from the beginning to the end? Because everybody agrees here that you had a perfect speech, right? Everybody was like, wow, this was really, really a great speech. So either you're practicing a lot, which I need to come work with you, <laughs> or, or I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but it, it was a really great speech. You just get better and better every day. It's not that the last speeches were bad. It's just that it's great improvement every time. So it's a really good motivation for all of us, especially for me. Okay. Now that I've changed my job, I feel like I will have more time devoted to giving speeches. And I feel better that I can come up here and talk, even though it may not make any sense. Okay. <laughs> you started your speech really well. They deep down ourselves, we have a special gift. And one of the questions it asks is, could the ending be better? So you had a great beginning. We laughed a lot. You took us on a journey. But then <clears throat> I was trying to find the ending where you say your friend woke up a few days later. But I guess I didn't learn where you going to go someplace and tell us what happened. Like uh, he was hit by a drunk driving. Did you stop drinking or not? Because I was kind of trying to hope to get that out of you. And uh, so you started it saying, deep down, we have a great gift. But I was hoping that you would package it with something. So you kind of left it that way. So maybe work on your ending a little bit. And then overall, it was really, really fun speaking speech. We all enjoyed it. So I'm like I said, I can learn a few things from you and add in some fun stuff because we're all here and we're a great supportive group. So if something said out of the connotation, I don't think I would take, you know, the way you were saying how uh, when you guys drank and talked for five hours, BS. So <laughs> that's, that was really fun. And keep doing that. Keep motivating me and others who are brand new. And I'm sure we will get there. So thank you.